Good day. I'm going to be showing the dihedral group of six elements is a group. So uh, the first thing I need to do is establish the group set elements and the operation. So the group set elements can be shown with these six triangles. And I'll start. The first one is the identity triangle. It's the triangle that represents no, trans no movement, if you will. And then the second one is a rotation of this triangle of 120 degrees. I'll call it R sub 120. And then you see the one, the vertex with the one will go here, the two here, and the three here. And then if I rotate the identity triangle 240 degrees, then um, what happens is the one will go here, the two here, and the three here. Uh, another possible transformation would be a reflection. So the next element I'll obtain by reflecting across a vertical line. And so you see the two from the identity will remain fixed, and the three and the one will st swap places. And I'll call this one V. And let's see, the next one will be a reflection about a diagonal line going from the lower left, right, and uh, going from the identity here, you see that one will stay where it's at, whereas three and two will be swapped. I'll call this D1. And the next one possibility is a reflection about a different diagonal line. It starts up top and goes down. I'll call this D2. And you see here, 3 stays fixed, and 2 and 1 are swapped. OK. So there's my elements, my six elements of the dihedral group. Six. Okay, so remember a group is a set with operation, so we've got to take a look at what is the operation in this case. And in order to show that, let's look at uh, an example of an operation in this group. Uh, let's say I started with the identity matrix, and I wanted to perform the transformation Uh, D1 followed by V. So the first thing I do is the transformation D1. And D1, if you recall, is a reflection about the diagonal here. So uh, the vertices would be labeled 1, 3, 2. Followed by the vertical reflection. So the next transformation is the vertical reflection. Uh, so what I do when I do the vertical reflection is I look at this triangle and I work from there. So the 2 and the 1 will be swapped and the 3 remains fixed. And so now if, you, if I'm reading clockwise from left to right I have the 2, 3, 1 and I, I can look at my elements here. 2, 3, 1 is equal to a rotation of 240 degrees. So this transformation will produce a rotation of 240 degrees. Uh, that's fine, but what operation is this? It's clearly not multiplication, and putting these two things together like that makes it look like multiplication. But what are we doing? We're doing the, we're taking D1 and then with D1, we're doing the vertical reflection. So let's just call this V composed of D1 of X, where X is a, where, where our transformations are functions of X. So this is V composed of D1 because when we do a composition, we do D1 first followed by V. So our operation for this group is uh, 
composition. All right. And I have taken the time to go ahead and make the table of group elements. So these are all the possible compositions on these group elements. And what you should notice is that the answers are in this box here and that uh, all of those are also members of the set. In other words, I couldn't possibly get a triangle that I haven't already um, have as a group element. So to prove this group is actually a group, I need to show four properties. First, I need to show closure. I need to show that it has an identity element. I need to show that this group has an inverse element for every element within the set. And I need to no show that the elements in my group satisfy the associative property under composition of functions. So let's get started. First, I show closure. And in order to do that, I just argue that all possible combinations of compositions of any two transformations of group elements is included in the table. Thus, there's no composition of group set elements that will result in a transformation that's outside our original set. And so therefore, our, this group is closed. Next, I show that there's an identity element. Identity element trans forms each element back to itself. So notice if I take the composition of I with itself, I get the identity. If I take the uh, composition of 120 degrees, composed of the identity, which is really no movement, then I'm just going to get a rotation of 120 degrees. Likewise, 240, a rotation of 240 degrees ends up in, as, as a rotation of 240 degrees because the identity is the no movement triangle. Um, it hasn't changed, so it's the fixed one. So this, our identity element is I, and our group has an identity element. show every element has an inverse. Well notice if I take a rotation of 120 degrees and compose that with a rotation of 240 degrees, I see that the inverse of 240 degrees is 120 degrees. Why? Because the inverse is that element which leads us back to the identity. So 240 and 120 is 360. It takes degrees which takes us all the way back to the original identity. Likewise the inverse of a um, 120 degree rotation is 240 degrees. If I reflect the triangle about the vertical, I reflect and then reflect again, then what I get is what I started with, the identity. And therefore the inverse of my vertical reflection is a vertical reflection. And uh, similarly the diagonals, with the diagonals, both of them. Thus, each element of the group has an inverse that is also in the group. So every element of my group has an inverse that's also within the set. Okay, last but not least, I need to prove property four, which is the associative property under the operation of composition. When I show the associative property, I choose arbitrary elements of G, elements A, B, C of G, and find each transformation as a function of x. And what I need to show is on the left hand side, if I group a and b together first, that I'll get the same result as if I group the elements b and c together on the right hand side. So let's take a close look. I'll start with the left hand side and show that my order of transformations is the same as if I perform the operations according to the formula there on the right hand side. So here's the left-hand side transformations. Um, with uh, equation one, notice I need to compose that which is in the parentheses first. So I compose A with B. This is A composed of B of X with C. And so there I select group element B and then perform the transformation A. Next I uh, then I, that gives me the transformation, I'll call it AB, which is just another element of the group. Then AB is composed with C. And in that case, I uh, select the group element C 
and perform the transformation AB. The order of transformations then will be C first and then AB. However, when we perform transformation AB, we perform B first and then A. Thus, the order of the three transformations is C, B, A. That's the left-hand side. Now let's look at the right-hand side. We select group element C and then perform the transformation with B. And in the next line, the transformation of B using C becomes group element BC. So now we're looking at the composition of A with BC. And then in the next line, we compose A composed of BC. So we select group element BC and then perform transformation A. So in line 8, we see that the order of transformation will be to select C and then perform transformation B. And the results in this transformation is BC. Next, we perform transformation A using BC. Thus, the order of operations again is CBA. So the order of operations for both, regardless of how we group the elements, will end up with the same result. That is the transformation, which is the transformation of CBA. And this concludes the proof that the dihedral group of six elements is in fact a group. Thank you.